Harris Hoosier Park invites you to an exclusive opportunity to bid on a 2021 breeding of the top six stallions in harness racing as part of the Breeders' Crown Charity Challenge. The breedings will be auctioned off at the 2020 Lexington Select Yearling Sale on October 6th at 6.45 p.m. at the Fanzig Tipton Sales Pavilion. All proceeds of the Breeders' Crown Charity Challenge will be donated to charity. Join us in person or bid online at www.lexingtonselected.com. Hello from horse country, a Lexington, Kentucky to be precise. I'm Heather Vitale for a Harness Racing Update. It goes without saying that 2020 has been quite a year. And as life slowly gets back to normal, this is the perfect time to make big plans for the future. For many in the harness racing world, that future happens to be on four legs. This week, buyers will take part in the Lexington Select Yearling Sale at Fazek Tipton with hopes of championships and trips to Victory Lane. But wait, before we get started today, I have a little disclaimer. See, I love being next to the people that I'm interviewing. In fact, I kind of like being in their personal space. <laughs> However, I also did not want everyone to have to wear a mask during the interview. So what we're going to be doing today is practicing big time social distancing so that you guys can see what the people I'm interviewing look like. It's always exciting to be at a yearling sale, but I think this year more than most because it's showing a new beginning when you buy a yearling. Inspiration, and we all could use a little of that right now. Oh, for sure, it's gonna be different, um, you know, there's some positives maybe that came out of it with like the walking videos and online and maybe expanded bidding on the telephone. Um, it's going to feel differently, but, uh, you know, in light of the current situation, you know, we've been, you know, way back in March and April and May when everyone, uh, you know, was aware of the virus and what's going to happen. Everyone had an opinion. The only problem is that the, uh, the virus changed every day, every week. And, you know, we've done the best job to plan accordingly with the with the breeders and with our you know with our clients and uh, you know hopefully with the prospective buyers as well so we'll, we'll see we'll see what happens let's talk a little bit about the plan I, I see when I drove in today I had my temperature checked I mean there's all kinds of things going on mask wearing talk about the protocol a little bit yeah so you know you know protocols that everyone's pretty much used to down here in the states I think and uh, you know we do have some international travelers here as well we do have you know Europeans and Canadians so but as far as phasic Tipton is concerned, it's obviously it's a first-class facility. The barns are outdoors, a lot of fresh air. Um, there's two uh, tents that have been set up uh, for the uh, for the public to go and, and and take cover or relax or chill out or whatever and social distance. And uh, we're going to be accepting bids out of one of those. Even with it being a little bit different <laughs> this year, it's still Lexington and there's still a lot of optimism because the local yearling sales have been awesome. So why wouldn't it be the same for Lexington, right? Yeah, so, you know, so the regional sales that have taken place so far, Ohio and in New York, you know, you know, the, the reports are that they were solid. And, uh, you know, when it comes to Lexington, the, 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 the quality of the catalog uh, speaks for itself and it has year over year. and. And, and also, the, the, you know, it produces a lot of, of top horses and champions. So, um, you know, if, if you're if you if you really want to buy a, a quality horse uh, to race from the classics the next year, two or three, you, you have to look at this catalog. You have to look at the breeders, and you have to look at the success. And I think that, I think this year is going to be no different. I know, I know that physically there's going to be some people not here, but mentally and, and, and engagement-wise, I believe they'll they'll find a way to be engaged. And uh, you know, if, if someone wants to buy a horse, they'll find a way. You know, if, if for some reason the pandemic has affected their business and and uh, they're just going to cut back a little bit, there's nothing we can do about that. You know, the breeders have started to plant this stuff two years ago. You know, uh, you're going to have first crop sires, you're going to have established sires. Um, you know, the pedigrees are what they are. So I th people will adapt. And the, the trainers are here and, uh, you know, the, the traffic at the farms has been good. So I really, you know... Here again, I don't want to, you know, I know the crowd's going to feel a little different, but I, I, don't, I don't believe there's been less work done. I just think it's been done in a different way and maybe a little more in advance, that's all. Bill, I'm not sure that people realize how many horses you own. Maybe you don't even realize it. <laughs> so how many do you own? I can't tell you exactly how many. Um, I think it's around 70 when you include the broodmares and babies. I have uh, about 40 in, in training. 
And obviously you're looking to get a few more into the mix here at the yearling sale. Uh, what you looking for? Um, a little of this, a little of that. Um, you know, I, I have no special uh, sex or, or gate that I'm looking for. Just seeing what I see that's the, the best buy, I guess. Well, you look at a lot of yearlings a year after year, so we're going to do a 1 to 10 on what's most important. Okay, so we're going to start out 1 to 10. Pedigree? 10. Confirmation? 8. Fitting four fingers underneath that throat? 9. Whoa, I wasn't expecting that. Okay, how about size? Uh, 8. Birthday? eight and the video nine. Oh my goodness okay then what's not important <laughs> um i don't think there's anything that's not important you know i basically when i go through the catalog i first will uh pick the page and then from the page i look at the video and then if i don't like the video that's it and then i you know last thing is looking that's how i pare them down so you know by the time i get here i think i have 140 to look at here, so right, right. process of elimination. Caroline, I noticed that each year Diamond Creek Farm is really upping their game here at the yearling sale with the food. So tell me about what's on the menu this year. Yes, of course, Heather. We are excited. Um, we always try to find a signature item. In the past, we had um, soft pretzels, but like this kind of get boring after a while. And we've done ice cream the last two years, but a lot of other people do ice cream and it's pretty cold here in Lexington today, especially if you're like me, who has to wear a winter jacket to everything. So this year to mix it up, we have some beautiful cakesicles. Um, made by a local uh, baker in Harrisburg. Um, we have a ton of these, so please come and eat them. They're delicious. We have uh, cookies and cream, we have nice chocolate one, and we have uh, delicious funfetti. So for sure, if you're in the area, grab one, grab 10, grab a handful, I'll give you a bag if you want, um, and enjoy. One last thing, I always like to plug the Diamond Creek Farm Stallions on Twitter. Yes, they're having a lot to say, aren't they? They do, um, especially this weekend with all the races. Um, we had winners from Sweet Lou, Mickey, Frank, and Creatine, so they're tweeting away. Um, they're tweeting right now. Um, they're just in Australia and New Zealand, but they, they let me know what they want to say, and we tweet it out for them. So they're pretty excited. We have their faces on the walls here today, and if you're here, you can grab one of our stallion brochures. Um, and yeah, we're pretty excited to have them and they're pretty excited to be here also, so be a good year. When it comes to yearlings, you can buy with confidence when you buy from Brittany Farms. The farm that bred and sold champions like Father Patrick, Manchego, and Better's Wish now offers buyers every pre-sale opportunity. With both in-person and virtual online inspections, Videos that zoom in on every confirmation angle. Go take a look at BritFarms.com. Anthony, you have a, quite a job this sale because you've come over from Canada, but a lot of people are still in Canada. There's people that are actually in Europe that can't come over. I mean, you have so many people that you represent with the stable. How you making out? <laughs> uh, it's been pretty good, you know. You bring your bring your mask and and uh, it's. It feels like Lexington, but it doesn't, kind of. And yeah, I have a lot of people that have called me from Canada and said, you know, how the biggest thing isn't getting to the U.S. Well, I guess it is difficult for some people getting back in without quarantining. Now, I had an exemption from racing on both sides of the border all year, so it's not a big drag for me in that regard. But there are good friends of mine and clients of ours that, that can't make it over here. So constantly on the phone, taking notes and videos and sending them out to our clients. But... I usually do that anyway, so it's not it's not really the end of the world. It's just, it's different. It's different. How are you going to juggle these nights? Like, do you have, like, 20 different lines that you're going to have lined up in front of you and who people are answering phones? <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't usually plan really far ahead, but I've, I've thought this through pretty good. I think today, most of the day, this is Sunday, so most of the day today, I'll finish off looking at the horses I want to look at. Um, our clients have sent me emails of horses they would like me to look at and send them videos of the horses, which I'll do also. Then we'll line up uh, specific groups, horses and clients for tomorrow and uh, tomorrow and beyond and what we're trying to do. I mean, the stable.ca isn't really geared for day one Lexington, but um, as, the, as the sale drags on, uh, I think 
you know, any, anytime you have a sale of this size, you're going to find horses, I hope, fall through the cracks, and that's really what we're looking for. Mark, you have a bit of a history here at Lexington, so tell me about the history and then what has brought you back. Well, gosh, it's a long history, but we sold, as I was telling you, we sold here at this sale, I, I can't even remember how long it was, decades ago. We sold with uh, Steve Jones, we sold under our own banner, and it seems to me we sold with somebody else, I'm forgetting, but um, that was many, many years ago, back when we were standing stallions. And then, um, since then, for the last 10 or 15 years, we've been selling in Harrisburg. But this year, with the advent of the virus, um, it was a real, it was a real, uh, I was pulling my hair out trying to figure out what the right thing to do is. It was so uncertain back there, February and March, when we had to make the decision about all this stuff. And uh, there was deadlines, and, um, and the whole issue with the help has been horrible. So, um, yeah, I just decided that we, I didn't want to have all my horses at one sale, for one thing. And, um, yeah, then how I was going to accomplish that. So I just felt like I, it's something actually I've been kicking around for a long time, turning them over to an agent to sell, instead of us doing all that stuff and the setup and the whole schmear out there at Harrisburg. So I've been talking to Dave on and off for many, many years about doing this. And, uh, yeah, I just decided that now was a good time to pull the trigger. So... Uh, if not now, then when? So, yeah, that's what we did. We sent half of them down here to uh, Lexington, and the other half, will, uh, Dave will be selling at uh, Harrisburg. Linda, this is an exciting sale. <laughs> Walner's babies are going through the auction. Yeah, I've been waiting for it for a while now because, um, obviously, he's, like, one of my favorite horses and probably one of the fastest, if not the fastest trotter I've ever trained or been around. Yeah, we want to mention that he didn't really get a chance to show his stuff on the racetrack, right? I think he showed plenty, but he didn't get the chance to show everything that he, I think he could do. There's no doubt in my mind he was a 48 trotter. You know, if he hadn't injured himself before the Hamiltonian, I think the world was his, uh, his oyster. So um, I'm really, really looking forward to it. He's gotten a big chance with some top mares, and his offspring look amazing. How many Walners do we expect you to be training <laughs> coming up here? I'm not sure my bankroll will allow me to, to uh, train as many as I'd like to, but I hope they all land in the right spots, and I think by the way they look, they will. Jim, I found you over here with the win back part of the sale. That is no surprise, is it? No, that's uh, always my first stop and very accommodating, and it's a place I like to shop. So what are you looking to take home here at the sale? winners <laughs> and uh, just uh, I I prefer for myself the uh, Pennsylvania breads and the Delaware breads which there's none of those here but uh, I getting too old to run around too much so I, I try to stay with Pennsylvania you know you haven't been coming to Lexington all that many years have you well not for an old guy no <laughs> I came I came years ago uh, driving some but uh, just got back in, into the, the better class of horses and, and got to get the experience of Lexington. New in 2020, Winback Farm of Ontario presents the Ontario Select Yearling Sale. The sale will be held October 17th at Winback Farm of Ontario in Inglewood, Ontario. Featuring yearlings sired by Artspeak, the first Ontario crop sales in 2020, Archangel, Better Than Cheddar, Better's Delight, Royalty for Life, Shadow Play and Sports Rider. For more information, visit Ontario Select Yearling Sale.com. Michelle, Ramona Hill. I mean, this is like your baby. Yes. I mean, can you put in words how fantastic this year has been? It's very hard to put into words. Al keeps telling me not to get used to it. I'm never gonna get used to it because I don't think that you can ever expect a year like we've had with Ramona. I mean, to be able to have bred her and to own a piece of her and to see the excitement that she brought to all of our partners on Hambo Day. And then she just continues to surprise us. I think the, uh, the race in Canada, you know, they hyped her up quite a bit. Um, 
that was that gave me goosebumps and I, I cried that night because I it hadn't set in for all of this time. So we um we're we're just riding that wave for right now. Hopefully it continues. You know, as a breeder, I mean you have to be so patient. So what motivates you? Is it seeing the horses in the winter circle? Is it foaling? I mean what is it? I, you know, I think we're just passionate horse people and we just we looked at the business and we I, there are a lot of lumps and bumps and there are learning curves and it took us a long time to develop um you know where we are right now with the crop on the ground and what's in the belly right now is crazy we really did get on to the crosses and you start to see your results and you really put all that work into it it's it just makes it so special i think there should be a tinder app for the mayor so they can swipe right on who they want to be with well then we're in trouble George, I know that times are a little bit strange right now, but it still is a Lexington and it's just really great being here. Oh, Lexington's great. Even with everything going on, it's just good to come down here and see people, to see the best horses in the world. It's really enjoyable. Now, how many horses are you going to look at and how many do you expect to buy? We're going to look at as many as probably 100 to 200. Just, I like to cover all my bases in case anything falls through the cracks, but how many we buy will depend on how the sale goes in the market the, because of the year and everything. Not everyone's jumping in two feet like they were last year. Yeah, what about your bidding? So are you doing the phone bid thing or do you have people here that are with you? A couple owners here, a couple at home that will probably be on the phone when the horses go in the ring and we'll see how it goes and they'll, they'll leave me in charge. All right. <laughs> One last question. I see you have a Patriots hoodie on. How are you feeling about the whole Tom Brady thing? Well, you know, it was 20 years of fun, so it was time to move on a little. And now we got a new road to travel with Cam Newton. We'll see how that goes. David, this is the first time that you're here at the Lexington Select Yearling Sale. So how come you made that decision? We came here for better weather rather than in November. But anyway, no, we came down here uh, with... 14 yearlings. Two of the owners of ours had decided they'd like to sell their yearlings at the select sale. So we brought them down here. I mean, why should we go raise them, put all of our blood, sweat, and tears into these youngsters and not stay right with them and sell them at this fabulous facility? Tell me about your farm. I mean, the way you guys are put together, it is like family through and through, isn't it? Most definitely, it is. Uh, be, it, the farm would not do what we do uh, with if it wasn't all the way from my wife, Robin, who's very much so in it, Julie. We have grandchildren that are very much involved in it. When uh, right from the folding at night, wife does inseminating. I handle Pennsylvania, because now we have three farms in Pennsylvania. So it's, uh, it's a family affair. Absolutely love that. And your daughter, Julie, is like maybe the backbone, could we say? I mean, she's huge into this. That is correct. She's uh, in the office. She's out here. If you come to the sale, you'll see she's the one making sure that the owners or the potential buyers are going to get to see their yearlings. She's very important. I could not be doing that the operation by myself. Okay, the one that is getting a lot of attention is number 62, Monkey Queen. Tell me about her. She's a very pretty filly. I would put her right at the top of the list. Confirmation, um, her, her attitude. She likes to, oh, she's always playing. She's a fast filly. She's faster than shows on the video. I've seen this with my own eyes, and I can vouch for that. Um, and we are excited with her. There is so much to look forward to this week with the sale beginning on Monday, October 5th. And don't forget that I will be bringing you recaps of the excitement from each evening for Harness Racing Update. Thanks for joining me, and happy bidding.